friends it's a very special uh, video today and uh, uh, today i am uh, going to take up uh, one of my most loved and cherished pens uh, which also sort of happens to be uh, a kind of a everyday career for me and uh, no guesses for this brand particularly uh, so we'll come to this uh, this is a mont blanc uh, one mister stroke 146 Uh, the pen comes in a uh, in a leather box uh, you can see the logo of mont blanc um, being printed at the side you have you have a, uh, a thin uh, strip of white inner cardboard box shining through between the two upper and lower lids and here you see uh, a small recess in which the pen sits comfortably very soft and uh, mont blanc branding onto the upper part also this is a fixed one lower uh, uh, lower inlay and uh, can't actually bring it out um i received the pen uh, this is a pre owned one so i received it in this box and obviously there are uh, no cartridges or converters because this is a piston filler so where's the pen well i have comfortably placed it in my daily carrier and not one but we've got two um uh, so i i happen to have a, a older version and a newer version so um, i'll happen to uh, show you the differences between the two also just to have a background i'll place something underneath this is a mont blanc mister stroke 146 the pen um, is a beauty the pen is a cult pen and uh, something which has been um, going on and on for decades all together uh, most of the limited editions also happen to come in the same um, uh, sort of uh, dimension because uh, this is probably the best selling models of the mister stroke world over the pen has been changing its uh, um, the a bit of uh, dimensions over a period of time but the cigar shape and the general outline remains the same this pen uh, has uh, uh, first I'll, i'll show i'll go over the pen and then i'll show you the difference between the two mont blanc is a cigar shaped pen um, and uh, the pen has a mont blanc uh, logo on the finial uh, it is a rounded finial what it depicts is uh, basically the mont blanc range uh, the the highest peak uh, and the six glacier valleys uh, sometimes also this is referred to as a snowflake um, but as their official site uh, mentions it's to be a mont blanc peak with the six glacier valleys spreading out the pen has a, a brass uh, clip uh, and it is pretty stiff it is ribbed and it's got a very pretty design simplistic design onto that this pen is a uh, pre 1990 era so you won't see any number on it but what you see here is west germany written so this is uh, this predates the 990 um well i can't come to uh, the complete panography because i'm not i've not researched that bit uh, here you see two small rings and in between a thick band which says mr mr struck number 146 and then mont blanc then a small uh, step down to the barrel and you have a small brass ring here also and the piston grip then once you open the section you have some threads which are generally onto the contour of the pen and it's not raised at all and a very tiny step down from the threads onto the onto the writing section which is sort of a non tapering very very hardly any tapering and then a slight flare off at the end and then you have the nib this is a single tone nib the nib as you see is uh, engraved 4810 which is which is the height of mont blanc uh, peak and then you have m for mr struck within a snowflake or uh, or the mont blanc logo and then 14k and then you have not see on the camera i think it has been engraved yeah 585 which is again uh, 
the uh, the 14 karat gold nib uh, quality uh, you see a bit of scratches i think it is because of the tiny adjustment it's a pre owned pen but a brilliant writer i can't complain anything about this uh, the pen has a ink window which you cannot see because the pen has been inked and there is a difference between the ink window of the two pens because this ink window has a slight bluish hue i'm afraid you cannot see it through this and it is not it does not have uh, small serrations in between so it's a continuous ink window which is with a slight bluish tint to that the fittings of the pen the piston is uh, having brass and uh, it has a bit of longevity over the new ones uh, it said that uh, this is more sturdier than the than the newer ones so as i open it up i hope i don't spill off the ink i hope i don't and you see the brass fittings shining through this one is a bit stiffer than the newer one but then um, it's not unpleasantly stiff um so again a uh, rounded bottom and how this differs from the two this one is in um, uh, this is in gold trims and this is in silver trims um this uh, newer versions does does not list the model it is saying mr struck picks which is again to identify whether this is a a fake or a non fake and how you would see is you would also find picks written on to the underside of the clip is it easy to make out well i think i can do some yeah okay. i think you will be able to make out there's something written underneath the clip and uh, then there is a serial number mentioned on to the band also this upper part of the clip band otherwise the dimension wise you can see that the newer pen has a slightly bigger dimension but the girth almost remains the same the nib on this is two tone i like the two tone nib and this also states the same 4810 mont blanc and then 14k and both of these nibs are medium dimension the trims on this are rhodium plated and then here you see the filling mechanism it's i think it's not brass somewhere it was mentioned plastic i really doubt that this is a very good piston filler but then uh, i think this is not brass here you see a bit of chipping otherwise uh, otherwise there these models are there is a hardly any other difference apart from um, these two things now there is a variety of range between these which you can uh, obviously search, search up on uh, fountain pen network about how the models have evolved over a period of time what i'm going to do now is compare their uh, dimensions with some other standard pens so here we have a Sailor Pro Gear, and here we have a Pilot Custom Heritage 912. All men in black, and you see the dimensions. Uh, a sort of comparable dimension to a Custom Heritage, although this is rounded and this is a flat tipped. But sort of uh, sort of a comparable dimension of the older one to the uh, to the 912. And what I'll do now is I'll since I have two pens with me i'll show you a bit of writing from both of them as regards posting well the pen can be posted pretty deep and post very well also the cap is not too heavy so but i think it would leave a bit of scratches on the barrel if you put it post it uh, firmly doesn't tip the balance gives a good length to it unposted i can hold it very well i don't like to post the pen it's made up of precious resin and <laughs> well you take a guess it's a glorified plastic or whatever i don't want to debate that the material quality is good uh, doesn't leave behind very obvious scratches there could there would be minor scratches based on the usage and uh, the the quality is good it's it's a it's got a decent weight to it and reasonably dense material coming to the heart of the pen this is a
the the numbering of this uh, would be one stands for Meister Struck, four stands for it being a piston filler, and six stands for the nib size. Uh, there are other ranges also, which is uh, medium and economy range. So this one, two, and three varies according to that. This is according to the filling system, and then you have other models like one four nine, which again is because the nib size keeps on varying. What I also wanted to show you was the ink window on this pen also if it is if there is something yeah you can see that uh, there is uh, it has been inked but the ink window has serrations on this which is not there on the older model so this one has a 14 carat medium nib the ink is a concoction of Diamond Soft Mint and Private Reserve Naples Blue. This is as best as it gets. Um, in whole of my collection, this is this is the best best writer um, which is out there. There is absolute perfection in everything in this pen. I like um, the writing of this pen. Uh, it lays down such a good wet saturated line. Um, I don't think I'm looking for anything that betters this in any aspect doesn't get better than this it's a pre-owned somebody must have done done adjustment somebody must not have but then I got lucky twice touch wood I think <laughs> I think the pen comes uh, with this uh, this charmed writing um, smoothness wise um, again I've written this across various papers this is uh, this is a a cheap photocopier paper um, if if I have to rate the wetness it's it's the best out there it's the best the pen it writes so so well and uh, the, the line is very saturated and it's very wet and if I have to rate the smoothness well it's the best of the lot there is there is there is such a such a good slight hint of feedback which I won't take any points out of out of the merits of this pen um, doesn't get better than this really um, if I have to say about the nib line variation across you may start to feel that there is some stubbish quality but then as the nib size increases and the nib starts to have some bit of flexibility on the down strokes I think you can expect this not to be a stubbish nature but just because the tines are opening up and splaying, bit, splaying a bit um, flexing I'm doing it with a very slight pressure because I don't want to splay out the tines and spring them apart I don't think these pens are meant to be flexed but then that's how far I'm gonna go with this mm, not taking much time with the other one as I said I got lucky twice but then this is this is such a perfect writer um, the best pen out with me available uh, in my collection and uh, uh, well pre-owned just go there and jump and grab it uh, if you've got the if you've got the budget for that uh, well if you wanna own them uh, first hand 
mm, uh, they are pretty expensive in the Mont Blanc uh, boutiques. Uh, I'm sort of have a divided opinion on that. Uh, I didn't have the heart to um, go there and buy. They are pretty expensive uh, for the first ownership. But then um, for a pre-owned one, uh, I don't think uh, there is a need to think twice on that. But yes, um, if possible, always try to buy them after a kind of a, a writing test. Uh, uh, I've, I've seen a couple of pens writing uh, on with a small bit of phantom drag where you don't have the scratchy feel. It's ultra smooth, but then you feel a kind of a drag with them or sometimes even a bit of scratchiness. I've been lucky. So uh, the best ones out there. Uh, I hope you like the review. See you next time.